What's up YouTube, this is Matt Brown with another hardware hacking video. Gonna be a little less focused on the hardware today and focused on some Wi-Fi findings, uh, some Wi-Fi vulnerabilities that we can really easily discover just by you know reading the sticker on the back of a wireless router. So with that, I'm going to go over to the desk and show you what I've got. So here is a Wi-Fi router. I've uh, done one other video on this so far, and I got this out of the e-waste bin. And what I'm gonna look at in this video is just what I can glean from the sticker uh, on the back of this device to see if there's anything we could use to exploit uh, other devices that are like this that are not under our control. So, uh, going to go ahead and try to show you. Uh, you don't need to read this because I'm going to have it pulled up on my computer. But on the back of the sticker here, it says uh, Data Remote. This is an LTE uh, cell router. So it has these like optional LTE modules that you can plug into this uh, router and have it be a, uh, a Wi-Fi router. It can also just do normal, uh, you know, Ethernet, WAN. Um, but on here it says SSID, DRI underscore router underscore, and then it has three letters. And that is the SSID. And then it also has a default password for this device. And that's what I want to talk about today because oftentimes uh, to hack a device like this or a, a whole bunch of devices like this, uh, all it takes is knowing where to look uh, for the right data. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And here over on the left, I've written down, I've just taken some notes of what I have on the back of the router. So I have the WAN interfaces MAC address listed here and uh, the corresponding uh, SSID, so this is going to be the default SSID uh, for this router, and you can and you can see that the way the SSID is constructed is very programmatic, right? So the WAN MAC address here, the last three bytes of that WAN MAC address uh, form the last three bytes of the SSID. So we can see where we're getting. Uh, how we're constructing the SSID based on the MAC address. And then where things get, get kind of bad are this default password. So you can see that the default password on this device is just the WAN MAC address with a one appended to it, right? So that is a very easy uh, to guess password. So, so this is just one router and obviously I have control of this router but what if, what if there are other routers that are vulnerable to, that, that, are, that are vulnerable to this? And so uh, what we can do to look for a similar router like this is we can use uh, something called uh, Wiggle.net. So this is a war driving database where people voluntarily donate uh, Wi-Fi scan data that they, uh, that they collect with their war driving rigs and they donate it to this platform, and then we can go in and perform, perform a search. So I have performed a search here. So uh, one thing to note is that the wildcard character uh, is an underscore, so unfortunately uh, we'll have like some false positives here, but not too many. So here I've put into the SSID field DRI underscore router, and then the first underscore will match the underscore in the SSID. And then these last three underscores will, you know, are just wild cards that will match these three characters. And you can see that we have found tons of these routers all throughout the United States. I, I don't think I see any of them that are not based in the US. I can go ahead and rerun this query and see uh, yeah, there, there you go. So you can see really, uh, it's just showing up in the United States and, um, kind of where you would expect, uh, <laughs> to see population centers within the United States. So, uh, yeah, so within these devices, uh, oh, I've lost my list. 
maybe there's too many of them. There we go. So for each one of these devices, you can see that it does list the MAC address of the device. And that is to be expected because that is a thing that you can collect when you perform Wi-Fi scanning, right? You get the MAC address of the wireless router and you get the SSID and then any information on what type of encryption is being used, things like that. So uh, this is, an, the, right here, I've got a great example actually. I wanna look at this device. Uh, here you can see DRI, router, under, and then the last, the last three is are 9F1. And that is slightly different from the MAC address. Here the MAC address is 9F0. So this router in particular, uh, have it has two interfaces one is the WAN MAC address that's like on on the Ethernet interface and that's how the device uh, gets its SSID and their and its password uh, the Wi-Fi uh, the Wi-Fi MAC address you can see though is predictably one byte lower than the WAN MAC address so this means that all I have to do to know a, a default password for any of these routers in here is I have to look at its MAC address and I can subtract or I can, or excuse me, I can add one uh, to, to, this, to this MAC address here at the end. So change this from 50 to 51 and then simply add a one onto the end, and that gives me the default password. And obviously, remove uh, the semicolons. So this is just a really quick example of something I found within five minutes of looking at this router. This is something that attackers use, uh, can use quite often to, uh, to conduct a targeted attack of, uh, of a certain router because they might know that it has a weak uh, wire set of wireless credentials and uh, I'm actually gonna jump yeah oh yeah I was gonna share one more thing with you that is pretty interesting so this is not the first router that has had an issue like this and this is an excellent uh, repository here uh, and in the readme is re where uh, the real cool information is I'll link this in the video description below but this is a repository that documents uh, certain routers and the key space or of the word list that is being used to generate the passwords. So there's a really uh, cool example that I always like to talk about in the Netgear router. So here, so if you've ever seen a Netgear router, they made a ton of routers in this generation that had this password scheme. So if you've ever, if you've ever seen a Wi-Fi network that was Netgear and then two numbers, so Netgear, you know, maybe 07, Netgear 09, two numbers after the word Netgear. The default password for those routers is an adjective, a noun, and three digits. And you think about that, and you might think it's secure at first, but actually when you get to looking at how many adjectives and how many nouns, I mean, not including, you know, proper nouns, just non-proper nouns, uh, in the English language, there aren't actually that many. And so uh, you can even see here in this repository, they have a list of you know, the top 500 English adjectives, the top 1500 English nouns, uh, so that it can create a word list. And that's, I mean, specifically targeting uh, this, this Netgear device because it's so infamous. Those types of mistakes, when you discover one of those, you can quickly use these war driving databases to fan out and quickly search where vulnerable devices are located. And this adds an additional layer of risk where an attacker can go to a location and know that at that location uh, there will be a vulnerable wireless device there that they can attempt to attack. And uh, they're not guaranteed to get in, right? Because if somebody changes the default password, then they're out of luck. Then they have to resort to you know other other traditional Wi-Fi attacks, brute force on, uh, or dictionary attacks on the password or something like that. But 
This is an extra tool in an attacker's toolbox and it should be an additional tool in your toolbox when you're assessing or just playing around with these devices. So I hope that you learned something from this video and I hope to make more of these videos coming up. Have a good day.